The three best vitamin C alternatives for sensitive skin. If you've ever used vitamin C, have you noticed that your skin gets like flushed and red? It can get really irritated. And even if you use a more oily form of vitamin C, sometimes it feels oily and sticky on your face and causes this stinging or this burning. Well, vitamin C has many benefits and some people are devastated that they can't use it. Aya is someone that I care about that I work with and she has this exact problem. She has dry skin and acne and she wants to use vitamin C, but she shared with me that most formulas burn her skin too much. And sometimes the oilier vitamin vitamin C serums just sit on top of the skin and don't soak in. So if you're like Aya and for some reason you can't use a vitamin C or haven't been able to find one that you like, but you want the benefits like major antioxidant boosting, collagen production, because yes, vitamin C is required for it. And overall having that brightness and glowiness to the skin that can even help with hyperpigmentation. These are three options that I use as an esthetician that are alternatives to vitamin C. And yes, some of these have even been said to work better than vitamin C. So let's talk about them. There's CoQ10, also called ubiquinone. There's pycnogenol, which which also comes from pine, and there's arbutin, also known as alpha arbutin, that can be fantastic for the skin. But first off, before we get into these things, why do people like vitamin C so much? Well, for many reasons. First, vitamin C is brightening. It's known to be what's called a tyrosinase inhibitor. Tyrosinase is what our skin naturally produces. It's an enzyme, but it allows our skin to make pigment. Unfortunately, sometimes that happens unevenly. So vitamin C inhibiting or stopping that basically puts up a stop sign and says no, and doesn't allow the tyrosinase to work. So that's why it helps with brightening the skin and actually decreasing little brown spots or even red spots that can happen from acne or pigmentation. But on top of that, vitamin C is an antioxidant, meaning it works around the skin to scavenge for these free radicals. Think of free radicals as these deadly little skin destroyers. They're trying to tear apart your skin, basically trying to grab at these electrons and destroy your face. And the vitamin C as an antioxidant says, don't take them, take me instead. And it kind of sacrifices itself for your face and for your health. Now on top of that, vitamin C is necessary for collagen production, for collagen synthesis, the strong stuff in our skin, our bodies need vitamin C in order to turn the collagen into that triple helix structure that it has. It's beautiful, but it's really hard for the body to form. And that's why vitamin C is necessary. Now, people who are hearing this are like, oh my gosh, well, if I can't use vitamin C, what am I supposed to do? Again, there are a couple of things that work very well, if not work better. Literally, some of these things can brighten the skin without irritation. These have antioxidant benefits that some have said are better than vitamin C. And some of these ingredients actually actually bind to collagen and elastin to help prevent it from breaking down even more. And we're going to get into the science of these three different ingredients, how they work and where to find them and put them in your routine. So get out your skin intellectual notebook or your notepad or get your screenshots ready because we're about to take notes and talk the science of skincare. Specifically, let's start with ubequinone, otherwise known as CoQ10. If you see coenzyme Q10, CQ10 or ubequinone, these are basically the same thing. And what's funny is that ubequinone is actually something that's used in medicine and a lot of people take it orally, meaning putting it in the body instead of just on the skin. Ubequinone is a super powered antioxidant. Yes, just like vitamin C is an antioxidant, ubequinone goes around kind of scavenging for those <laughs> free radicals and saying, don't destroy this person's skin or the inside of their body, take me instead. Now, the special thing about ubequinone is that ubequinone is oil soluble, whereas regular vitamin C L-ascorbic acid is water soluble. Ubequinone being oil soluble absorbs so beautifully into the face, into the skin, because our skin has that fatty acid lipid barrier, our skin has fats in it and like dissolves like, so the ubequinone can get in, but it also works well in the body. For some people who have heart conditions or are on statins, a lot of doctors recommend taking ubequinone or taking CoQ10. I know some doctors don't, but for some people, that is a reason that it is taken orally inside of the body. CoQ10 also decreases the activation of matrix metalloproteinase. And I know that sounds crazy, but let's just call it MMP. Basically, MMP causes fine lines, wrinkles, etc. MMP breaks down collagen. Think of ACE, A-S-E. Anything with ACE at the end is an enzyme. Remember that enzymes speed up reactions by breaking things down. So we don't want the MMPs to destroy our collagen. The great thing about ubequinone is that ubequinone comes in and says, no, 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 not on my watch. And it prevents this from happening. So the MMP can't break down the collagen when the CoQ10 is there. This helps with fine lines and wrinkles. And another big benefit is that CoQ10 can be used alongside other ingredients. It can actually hydrate and plump up the skin, which I need to talk about right here with Glow Recipe. I have absolutely fallen in love with this. This right here is a Cloudberry Bright Essence Toner, and they call it this because it's like an essence toner formula. I fell in love with this. It's one of my favorite fat waters that we spoke about, and Glow Recipe reached out and said, you love this so much, do you want to talk about it? I said, absolutely. And I actually got the scoop on what is in here and how it's extracted. Because you see, this isn't just CoQ10, even though there is a huge amount of CoQ10 in here. There's also rice water and cloud 
cloudberry. And this cloudberry is fantastic. It's from Scandinavia and the way they harvest it is insane. It's flash frozen and then it is fermented to basically ferment or break up all of the particles to make them smaller and easier to absorb into the skin. And then they can have additional benefits. Now, when they're flash frozen in Scandinavia, these cloudberries, they're like these bright orange berries. They actually, you know, look like this. They modeled this bottle off of a cloudberry and they grow in these horrible conditions. <laughs> there's low oxygen, the sun is blaring on them, there's harsh weather conditions, you know, it could be way too cold, they don't get enough nutrients all the time, and essentially these plants are really, really resilient. And when scientists and researchers started looking at them, they said, wow, cloudberries are amazing for people to consume, but also have benefits for skin. There's things like vitamin E, there's beta carotene, which is vitamin A, and yes, there's forms of vitamin C naturally found in the cloudberries that are different from what we use in skincare with ascorbic acid that can burn the skin, but as the cloudberry extract, there's this entire bundle of different vitamins that can actually nourish the skin. And just because these plants are resilient doesn't mean it's going to make your skin more resilient. But when we look at the other ingredients in here, there are ingredients that help with skin resiliency, including that CoQ10, including some of the hydrating ingredients. Another fermented ingredient in here is rice water. And the history of rice water is also fascinating. It has been used for thousands of years. And in certain rituals, they actually used to bathe in rice water. Royalty used to do this. And the founders of Glow Recipe are actually Korean. The story of Glow Recipe is actually fascinating, but it was created to be this K-beauty curator. And then they started creating their own products because they were working at L'Oreal and they wanted to basically bring their Korean culture in with their American identities. But one of the founders shared with me that she used to read old Korean literature, old Korean texts, and rice water was brought up all the time. And even the other founder shared with me her story of using rice water as a child. Her mother and her grandmother would basically use rice water for their skin and hair. And that was totally normal. But in America, it's not like a common practice, right? And they essentially wanted to take their Korean culture and history, but also the history of the amazing benefits of fermented rice water and put them in this product. Rice water, specifically fermented rice water, can actually be really beneficial to the hair. Obviously, this is for skin, not for hair, but the rice water can soothe the skin. It can provide antioxidant boosts. There's beta glucans in rice that can help to nourish the skin. And again, that fermentation helps to break apart and ferment a lot of those larger sugars, and that helps them penetrate into the skin even deeper. Now, what's fantastic about this, this was made for for sensitive skin. It was made for me! I have so many issues with citrus, like bergamot and grapefruit, they just burn my face. And when I first, you know, saw this going viral on social media and picked it up, I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work for me. This does not irritate my face at all. And it doesn't cause that flushing that citrus products or the vitamin C products do. And again, it's because there's no L-ascorbic acid in here. There's no vitamin C. It's the fermented rice water, it's the fermented cloudberry, it's the CoQ10. And this is just one of the best serums ever. They also have their watermelon serum the niacinamide one, that's good for like oily skin and large pores. And while you can use it for sensitive skin, it is different. I feel like there's nothing else like this. And again, I shared an in-depth review of this in that fat water video that you can definitely watch. I'll make sure I link it right here and right here. But if you're looking for an alternative to vitamin C, CoQ10 is such a fantastic one. Because again, vitamin C is essential for collagen synthesis. CoQ10 helps keep collagen in the skin by fighting against those MMPs, those matrix metalloproteinases, if you want to say that five times fast. And then on top of that, brightness and hydration. Vitamin C can do that, but so can CoQ10. And if you're looking for one that layers beautifully, you can use this morning or night. This can also really boost up a sunscreen because it does have antioxidants. This just soaks into the skin so well. And you can use it as a serum or as a toner. Again, they call it a essence toner, but it really is this unique like fat, jelly water that I am obsessed with. But let's just say it layers so well and it works with other actives. But we also mentioned pycnogenol. Do you remember pycnogenol and do you know what it is? Remember it comes from pine trees and pycnogenol is also quite special and I feel we need to talk about her because I've actually been trying some new products that have pycnogenol in them. My favorite pycnogenol and the one that I always go for is from The Ordinary. This is the pycnogenol 5%. It's a water-free formula, which again, like CoQ10, is oil soluble. I mean, it can actually penetrate into the skin better. But this pycnogenol is like a super antioxidant. This is the least expensive one that I know of and it works really well. I think it's $11.10 or $10.11. It's a tiny little bottle, but I love this and it actually reminds me of my childhood because it smells like pine trees. And I used to go camping out of my parents' car. We used to go on the California coastline and like put a mattress in the back and um, like a tent and make s'mores. And we would have like week long road trips on the California coast in the redwoods. And it was gorgeous, like redwoods, ocean. Oh my God, like if you've not been to big 
Sur, put Big Sur on your bucket list, okay? But this reminds me of my childhood because it has that pine essence. Here's the thing about pycnogenol. It's literally extracted from pine trees. Now, this is a new product. I've been trying it from Korea. This is called Urbanand, 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 Urbanana. Dyslexia is hitting hard here. Urban and, Urban and, Urban and, Urban and Banana. That's the name of my new country band, Urban and Banana. Anyways, this is from Urban and, and in Korea, they've actually gotten a whole bunch of awards for their packaging, at least that's my understanding. But this is something that I've been trying out and I love it. This has pine extract, so you won't find pycnogenol on the ingredients list in here, but pine extract has pycnogenol in it. And this is fantastic from the ordinary. You can use it as a serum, especially if you live in a polluted city, if you live with a smoker or if you are a smoker, this can help scavenge those free radicals on the skin and help get rid of them. And it does kind of have this orange tinge, this super antioxidant orange tinge that you can rub in to help make it disappear. But it's a water-free formula, so it can feel a little bit oily. Whereas with this, this is literally a gel moisturizer. Look at this. It is gorgeous. This right here, it almost reminds me of like the Biosance gel moisturizer, just less expensive. And again, the ingredients are totally different. But do you see how that's like a beautiful gel? This is so good. And because it has that pine and pycnogenol in it, it's more of a moisturizing formula, whereas this is more of like an oil serum. And what I love about this is that it actually layers so perfectly with this. I brought this with me all the way to Korea to use it because I didn't want to take it out of my routine. I love this so much. And while I was in Korea, I was trying out some of these new products that I can't wait to bring to you because I have found and discovered such interesting things. But this is one that's quickly gone to the top of the list. Again, the texture is like inexpensive biosance, but the benefits are the amazing hydration, the absorbability. It's like a nice gel formula. It gives you kind of that glass skin glow. I'll show you my hand even once it dries down, but it layers really well with other things. And it's just beautiful. It's not the cheapest K-Beauty product I've ever used, but it's great. And again, it has this pine extract, which has pycnogenol. Let's talk a little bit more about pycnogenol and how it rivals vitamin C. Because pycnogenol has actually been studied against vitamin C. And some people say that pycnogenol is an even more powerful antioxidant than vitamin C. That's right. You thought vitamin C could scavenge those free radicals? Pycnogenol said, hold my beer. <laughs> I actually don't know, would it be beer or would it be s'mores? If pycnogenol were a person, what kind of beverage would they drink? Please let me know. Would it be a beer? What would it be? What would it be? My pycnogenol would definitely say, hold my s'mores. Because again, it reminds me of my childhood where we used to make s'mores out of the back of the car in the redwood forests. Anyways, this is an excellent choice for dehydrated skin, especially because pycnogenol can be used and layered with so many other things. And this as an antioxidant can go underneath sunscreen to boost that sunscreen up. I haven't seen any medical data showing that pycnogenol can increase collagen production or anything like that, but pycnogenol has been shown to bind to collagen and elastin to prevent it breaking down. So whereas vitamin C is creating new collagen, pycnogenol is saying, let's not break it down, let's keep what we have. Because it is such a fantastic antioxidant, this is a great replacement or alternative to vitamin C, especially because it doesn't sting the way L-ascorbic acid does. And it comes in other forms that really soak into the skin instead of sitting on top of it. But what if you've got hyperpigmentation? Pycnogenol and ubequinone have been looked at for hyperpigmentation, but we need to talk about alpha arbutin. There are actually so many great alpha arbutin products. Cut after we need to talk about alpha arbutin, but it actually comes from hydroquinone. Now, what is hydroquinone? Hydroquinone used to be available without a prescription. It is no longer. I don't know why they took it off the market. Well, I do. Safety concerns for people who used it improperly. But obviously, if people use too much of it and eat their skincare, they're not going to have such a good time using skincare now, are they? No? No. Anyways, hydroquinone was an amazing option that you could buy over the counter at like 2%. And you can't anymore. You have to get it prescribed by a doctor or a derm. But it's used for major pigmentation, things like melasma, those little spots that show up after acne pimples, or if you get a scratch on your face, even those dark under eyes that come from pigment, not just from fluid retention. Hydroquinone was amazing for that. But unfortunately, hydroquinone, especially at high amounts, can cause a rebound pigmentation, meaning if people use it and don't stop, the pigmentation can come back worse. And that's why it's now prescribed by doctors and derms. But a lot of people are sleeping on alpha arbutin. You see, alpha arbutin structure is basically hydroquinone with an attached sugar. And alpha arbutin is fantastic because it has many of the same benefits that hydroquinone does, only it's much more gentle on the skin. Do you remember how vitamin C was a tyrosinase inhibitor, basically stopping that enzyme from being 
able to produce that pigment? Well, alpha arbutin is what's known as a competitive inhibitor. Now, what is that? Well, think of a competition. This alpha arbutin competes and it says, I want to fill that spot instead of letting the tyrosinase enzyme fill that spot. So if alpha arbutin goes in there and says, oh, this looks like a nice seat. I'm going to sit here. Well, the tyrosinase can't sit there anymore. So that pigmentation can't occur. It also suppresses melanogenesis as according to some medical studies. But what that basically means is melanin is the pigment in our skin. And if we have something that inhibits, stops or prevents it, we're stopping the melanin, the pigment. And if we look at that word melanogenesis, that melanin creation, if this inhibits or stops that melanin creation, we can't have that pigment show up in skin. And alpha arbutin is so good at doing this. And again, it is so gentle on the skin compared to hydroquinone and compared to regular vitamin C. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this does not stimulate collagen production. So while this is great for pigment, for those dark spots that show up on skin, for that hyperpigmentation, this does not have an impact on collagen the same way that CoQ10 or pycnogen will do or that vitamin C does. And that's why this is probably the best for those dark marks like those acne scars. And this is fantastic for pigmentation, but you can use this alongside some of these other choices, which again, if you can find other products that layer well, you can get such good benefits out of this for the hyperpigmentation, kind of like that acne scar response and that inflammation, while also supporting the skin with the pycnogenal antioxidants and with the CoQ10. Absolutely, this is like a wonder trio right here. Now, this happens to be the alpha arbutin 2% plus hyaluronic acid from The Ordinary. This is a really good one. It's inexpensive and effective. It's a really nice one. But if you wanted other options, there is the Inky List. They have an alpha arbutin serum. If you want K-Beauty, there's a Beauty of Josan or Beauty of Josen. They actually have a very good alpha arbutin serum. I've seen amazing reviews on it online. I know that there are a couple of other ones out there as well. Oh, Good Molecules has one. But basically look for arbutin or alpha arbutin because it's a great option that you can still buy over the counter, especially if you can't get your hands on something like hydroquinone, which needs that prescription from a derm. And if you don't want to use vitamin C or if it doesn't work for your skin, but you're like, I love the idea of vitamin C brightening my skin and helping with dark spots. The alpha arbutin, the alpha arbutin, baby. Honestly, if you wanted to do like a K-beauty, no vitamin C version, I would do the glow recipe. I would get the beauty of Josen alpha arbutin and the herb and. And if you didn't want to do the K-beauty version, I'm trying to think of a good ubequinone or CoQ10 product that isn't K-beauty, because right now this is the only one that's coming to mind. I'm sure there's one. And then you could use the Ordinary's Pycnogenol. And again, you could use the Alpha RB10 from the Ordinary, the Inky List. I think this right here is a power trio. And I actually am going to recommend some of these to Aya. She's amazing. If you've ever reached out for help or support with a skincare routine, Aya's an esthetician who I get to work with. And she literally does that for others for free. And I'm so honored and happy that I'm able to work with such a creative and beautiful person, both inside and out, to do that. And I'm so grateful that I also have the ability to compensate her for that amazing work she does, which is again why I'm super grateful to Glow Recipe for working with us on a portion of this video and also allowing us to talk about these ingredients, allowing you to have this knowledge so that you can make the best choices for you. And the fact that they're made by such bad women who are willing to defy the norm and stand up to the skincare industry and do what they think is right. Even if it means sourcing ingredients from Scandinavia and flash freezing them so that they're easy to transport but still have their nutrients and still support the communities that they're getting them from. Or honoring culture and tradition with fermented rice water and putting them in these truly beautiful packages. And again, even being okay with sharing knowledge and information about other brands. That's how you know a brand really gives a shit or a person really gives a shit about you and your knowledge is if they're willing to tell you the truth about what's available so that you can make the best choice instead of shoving something down your throat. Fun fact, that's why not only do I love them, but that's also what you want to look for in an esthetician or a dermatologist. Look for someone who gives you the honest answers so that you can choose what's best for you as opposed to just saying, there's only one answer. Like it's very black or white. There's no nuance, right? Because there is nuance in everything. And I just appreciate people and brands who are willing to be honest about that and to play in that nuance and share where things are best for the person who's receiving that information on the other end. Again, I will be recommending some of these to Aya. She actually sometimes helps with these videos. So I wonder if she'll see this before I get a chance to give these to her because I haven't gotten to see her in person recently. But I'm going to go find out when I get to see her again. And I'm also going to leave the links to some of these medical studies and like Glow Recipe's case study in the description below so that you can actually read the medical studies, find out where this information comes from. So you can learn more about it and dive into your little skin intellectual oasis. Put on your skin intellectual pants and start reading some of these amazing medical studies. And of course, I will link to these as well. YouTube has this feature where I think they like pop up mid video. So click that little button and you can actually read the ingredients and then you can even like save it for later if you want to. But click, read the ingredients, read the medical studies, educate yourself so that you understand 
understand when something like vitamin C doesn't work for you, what other options there are. Or if your friend comes to you and they're like, you're a risk intellectual, what do I do? You have the information and you know where that information comes from to help them be more inspired by the products they could use and to help give them the right skincare that makes them love the way that their skin looks and feels. So that being said, always remember to stay hydrated, both orally and topically. Reapply that SPF. Again, these are such good SPF boosters, the Pycnogenol and the CoQ10, because they're such great antioxidant. And most importantly, always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you, and I can't wait to see you in this next video. Love you guys. Bye.